Hello, everyone. This is Robert Woodward. We're going to talk about forecasting using our Capsim core simulation. So first, what is a forecast and why is it important? A forecast is how much we think we're going to sell. And why is it important? It's utilized in every other department within our business. So production is going to use it to determine how much they're going to produce. And our finance team is going to be looking at how much money we're making, and it's going to help them make proper assumptions of financing and everything to make the numbers look good. So how should we create one? There's a number of ways in which we could create a forecast. We're going to walk through a couple options. So I have my marketing department pulled up, and we're going to look at one of the more common and simple methods of coming up with our forecasts. So all the information that we're going to need to do this method is on a report page. So we're going to go up at the top. We're going to click on reports. Reports here, right here, the first option on the drop down, And we're going to move to the low end market, which is going to be section three marketing low tech. Okay. So all we need for this method is the name of our product. Since I'm running the Andrews company, my product is called Able. So here I have how much I sold last year and how much I should have sold last year. So if I want to be creating my forecast based upon how much I sold last year, the approach I'm going to take is I'm going to take this 1,039 units and I'm going to multiply it by the growth rate. Okay. And then I'm going to add back what I sold last year combining the two, and that's going to give me how much I'm going to sell this year. So let's pull up a calculator, enter 1,039, and we're going to multiply it by the growth rate, 0.1. So in other words, we're going to sell 104 units more than what we sold last year. So if we want to determine our total forecast, we take that number and add back the 1,039, giving us 1143 units okay at which point if this was our method we would go back to our marketing screen and we would enter 1150 as our forecast okay now alternately the same approach you could follow if you're using potential units so you would then take the 1196 again multiplied by the growth rate and it's the same, same equation. So same process, you add the 10% of the 1196 to the 1196, giving us a forecast somewhere around 1300. So let's take a look at the numbers. So this is what we call the quantitative method, also known as using units sold. So if we again, look back to those numbers, 1039, plus 10% of 1,039 gives us the 1143, which we can very well enter as our forecast. Now, if your product sells into both markets, which it very well could, and likely will in the first couple of years, it's important to add your low-tech projection with your high-end projection, and then add up the two, and that would be the forecast that you would enter onto the marketing screen. Now, we looked at units sold and potential units. So which one's better? So the 1,039 is what I did sell, okay? But it's not necessarily what I should have sold, okay? Now, last year I sold, should have sold 1,196. If I do my growth rate of adding 10%, that gets me to 1,316 units instead of the 1,143 units we saw when we used units sold. So which one's better, potential or actual? In my opinion, I would strongly encourage using potential market share or potential units because it's how much you should have sold in the first place. What that number assumes is how much you would have sold if no one, you or any competitor, ran out of product. So it's a better indication of what you're likely going to sell in the coming years because it's what you should have sold last year. All right, so back to my marketing screen. Okay, that's one of our methods. The second method is looking at 
more of a qualitative method approach, basing it off of how our product is currently meeting the needs of our customers. So it doesn't focus as much on what happened in the past, instead it focuses on where our product is now, how our product currently meets the needs of our customers. So what we're going to need is first off, we're going to need the size of our market. So if our product is selling into the low end market, at the bottom of our marketing screen, we get our segment demand. And for this year, it's gonna be 6,098 units. We're gonna need that number, okay? So where we go now is we go back to our report. And again, we need this top product chart, which is 3.4, and we need to find our product able. So what we're gonna need this time is this customer satisfaction number. Now this is a score that the products receive based upon how it meets the needs of the customers, the buying criteria, as well as the marketing numbers, okay? It's a perfect way for us to figure out how our products sold in December. And since that's a recent point in time, that's a good starting point for our forecast. So what we do here is we add up all of these customer satisfaction numbers on this far right column, the 25, 20, 19, 17, 16, and eight. And we sum it all together. And then we take our score divided by the sum of all of the six numbers. And let's look at the math. So here's the math using that approach. So looking at the low end market, we had a combined customer score of 105. Now, if we take our 25 and divide it by the 105, we get 0.238 or 23.8%. So we'll take that number and multiply it by the 6,098 units which gives us a forecast of 1,451 units. Now that's a number we can also enter into our marketing screen, okay? But again, keep in mind, if your product sold into both markets, it's important to repeat the process, adding the 1,451 for low end to whatever the number is for your high end after you do the same approach. So the big question is, what now, okay? There's a few other questions that, that we very well may come across. So first off, is there anything I should do differently in round one? In year one, there's a whole lot of things that you will not know. You won't know the competitor's strategies. You won't know how they're going to price their products. You won't know if they're moving their product from low end or high end. There's a very little information available to you. So the, the way you can approach it is in year one, you can use actual or potential because they're gonna be the exact same to come up with your starting point. And what I would do from there is focus on what changes you are making. So are you dropping your price? Are you raising your marketing? And think about what are gonna be the impacts of those decisions. So for example, if you're going to raise your marketing, you'll probably, sell more than you otherwise would have. If you raise your price, you would sell less than you otherwise would have. So you can increase or decrease based upon that information you get on the actual or potential sales. So of the three methods we've looked at, what are they telling us? So the actual sales is how much you will sell if your market share remains exactly the same as last year. Potential is if you expect your market share to be the same as what you should have sold last year. And the final method is how your product will sell if it remains exactly as it is right now as the December 31st of last year. So the big question, where do we go from here? Now you can stop where you are at this point if you're comfortable with that process. If you're comfortable with the number you came up with, if you think it's going to be an accurate indication of what you're going to sell, you can stop. But where you can go from here is keep in mind, all three of those methods are looking at historical data, either what did happen, what should have happened, or how our product met the needs at the end of the year. But none of them look forward. None of them focus on what's going to happen next year. So it's important, and I would recommend looking at the report. So that report we pulled up section three, section four, 
and look at what do you think is changing. So you could look to see if there's any new products. You could look to see, have teams historically been dropping prices? Is there room for improvement more from one product to another? You can look at the numbers and how they meet the buy criteria, and you can make some assumptions and some adjustments to your expectations based upon the things that you see. So the last big question, what is the best way to reduce the risk of stocking out or for receiving an emergency loan? So let's go back to our marketing screen. All right, so we're back at our marketing screen. We have the 1150 that we had when we were doing our actual market share. So let's use this method, but it doesn't really matter which one you use, but for the sake of the presentation, let's use this 1150 number. Now, the 1150 is what production and finance are going to use as the projection for this closing cash position. If you sell less than this, you will have less cash. If you sell more than this, you will have more cash. So the best way to alleviate the risk of running out of money is by simply being a little conservative on your forecast and dropping the number to scale back a little bit just to see where your cash will be if you don't quite meet your demand. Now, a common approach is to take maybe about 10% off of the original number. So if our forecast was 1,000, then maybe we forecast 900. If it's 2,000, maybe we forecast 1,800. So again, reducing it by roughly about 10% is a pretty good estimate. What that's gonna do is it's going to show you a lower number, but that's how much your cash will be if you sell that lowered amount. Now, if to avoid stocking out, what you wanna do is we wanna go back to our 1150. And the best way to avoid stocking out is to simply have extra units available in production. So again, roughly about 10% extra is a pretty good place to be. So what this is really doing is it preparing you in case you only sell 90% or 10% less than your original assumption, but you're also preparing yourself in case you sell roughly 10% extra beyond what you think you're gonna do. This way you have extra units available just in case. So it's kind of what we call our best and worst case scenario. We're really trying to reduce risk of stocking out and reducing the risk of running out of cash and receiving an emergency loan. Now, if this video has been helpful, what I would recommend doing, if you have any, any other questions, come back to your dashboard and click on this help and support item up here at the top right-hand corner. There's a number of great resources available for you. But in addition to that, if you have any questions for us, give us a phone call, shoot us an email, send us a support ticket right here, send a support ticket button. All three are gonna reach us and we are more than happy to help. Good luck as you're going through the simulation and you all have a great day. Bye-bye.